I uh, owe you closure on this uh, variometer. This is the final form of it, and let's go over some of the things that have that have been done since we last saw it. The uh, these ends have been soldered on here to make it easier. So all the wire ends have have connection loops on them, and all the way around. Uh, I have screwed the two halves together of the outer shell, as you can see, and I have put in hot glue uh, to relieve strain on certain areas where the wire could get bent and break off easily, especially where it would be very troublesome, like down in here. If that broke off, that would not be that would not be fun. Uh, we've already talked about the commutator and. Uh, how that works in another video, but those are uh, changes. And it works very nicely. I've put a, an insulator on here because one of the things is the variometer is extremely sensitive to its environment. So, I mean, you get your hand near it, you get other stuff, metal or anything near it. If you touch one of these shafts with your hand, uh, in fact, if you even go like this where it's insulated, but it's near the, the uh, brass, it changes the uh, frequency of the uh, device significantly. So you know, I kind of have to go out here and, and turn it, which is okay. Uh, it turns fairly easily. And this one is unrestrained. It doesn't have the limiters on it because the commutators uh, will allow a 360 degree rotation without something breaking. I found one of these of uh, similar size and configuration online, and it had a range of 832 microhenries, which is remarkably similar to this one. Uh, I can't say after thinking about it, I was really surprised because this one is modeled after one I found on the internet. It's, it's as close a copy as I could make from just a photograph. So um, the bad thing is it did not have a diagram for the radio, the associated radio of it. And yeah, uh, so that is the next step. Uh, we've gone, we, you know, we've gone through building this thing from start to finish. Uh, again, this really is the final form of it. This is how I'm going to use it. And uh, I have started looking at the circuits for variometers to use as either a uh, radio tuner or an antenna tuner. And frankly, you know, this isn't going to surprise you. A lot of the stuff on the internet is just garbage. The first simple diagrams I've found I put together and they just don't work. I can tune in one station, but if I'm going to tune in one station, I might as well just use a diode and an earphone. I mean, that'll, that'll work just as well. Uh, I have gotten two stations and it was kind of interesting because in one configuration, I was getting just a little over one a station at one megahertz and opposite, I was getting one at 500 megahertz, which tells me something about the, the place where this likes to resonate. Um, I'm probably going to combine it with a capacitor, with a variable capacitor, see what I can get out of that. I won't post the progress on the uh, radio because I'm just going to find something that works and then when I do I'll put it together and I'll post it. I won't waste your time about going through all the all the junk that's out on the internet and you know that that would be forever. Literally it'll be I, I expect I'll have to go through 40 or 50 before I find one that actually works. Uh, the smaller model, the prototype, I finished out pretty much the same. I put shrink wrap out here on the shaft so I could turn it without, uh, without interfering with the uh, electromagnetic field of the variometer. This is limited. It doesn't have to be because I use the same type of commutator. I also did the same thing with all of the uh, wire ends. They all have loops on them for, for ease. Uh, the bottom side, nothing special going on down there. Just the uh, back side. Uh, so far, what I have found is that one of these <laughs> types of radios with this uh, big coil is a lot less sensitive to the environment. I mean, I'm going to have to be careful how I mount this and, you know, whatever, because even putting it in a metal box, I strongly suspect is going to affect the, uh, 
the electromagnetic field. When I'm working with it, if I get my hands even like this far away, which is a couple inches, say uh, five centimeters, uh, it starts affecting it pretty significantly. So yeah, the enclosure is going to be an interesting thing. I probably just use an open breadboard. Okay, I can't think of anything else right now, but again, that pretty much concludes this. Uh, if you're ready to start building, go for it, um, because yeah, this works fine. Um, there's, I, I can't see any major improvements happening. So again, I'm just gonna start putting it in circuits and testing them to see which one works, uh, either as an antenna tuner or as a radio tuner. Okay, well, that was it for this round, uh, you know, for this variometer. Hope you found that useful and interesting in your home DIY antenna building and or crystal radio building.